stop of peace is not a peace in independence and freedom, but a peace in slavery. A peace of nightmare which the Vietnamese people will not accept. The conference still fails to make any progress. This is precisely because the U.S. still refuses to accept the fair and reasonable stand of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam government and the South Vietnam National Front for Liberation and deliberately omit the key point, that is, since the U.S. is working in a question against Vietnam, it must end its question and withdraw all its troops and those of its satellites from South Vietnam without any conditions. The responsibility fully rests with the U.S. signed. The least seat developed to try to cut off the aggressive acts of the U.S. in Vietnam and continued his habitual slander against North Vietnam. As in the biggest sessions, for example, head of the Saigon Corporate Administration continue to plead for the U.S. equation. In his additional remarks, Chen Bian Kim started many facts and statements of American personalities affirming that the U.S. is a person who has trampled upon international law and is continuing its equation with Vietnam. One more country refuted U.S. slander against North Vietnam. Only two days ago, he recalled, Justice Dallas at the U.S. Supreme Court himself said that the majority of the American people oppose the U.S. military regime and oppose the aggressive war in Vietnam. Sunday called on the U.S. representatives to settle down for a serious discussion of the Vietnam issue on the basis of the 4% of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam government and the five points of the South Vietnam National Front for Liberation in order to end the U.S. aggressive war in Vietnam. The next session is set for April 24, 1969. <laughs> Vietnam Casualty, Marine Corps, Nurse Corporal, Richard Andrews, Class Staff, Arizona, Brothers of Class, German and Fever, Widener, Arkansas, Corporal, David J. Gatton, Ventura, California, Brothers of Class, Michael S. Mason, Stockton, California. First Lieutenant, Russell E. Mook, Stephen Taylor, Florida. Brother First Class, Homer West, Middle Borough, Kentucky. Last couple, Bradley G. Frank, Livermore, New York. Brother First Class, Dennis C. George Jr., Jefferson, New York. Last couple, Robert A. Barnes, Euclid, Lynn Hunter, Lance Corporal, John B. Hester, Long Island, New York, Brother Fulton, John L. Beebe, North Industrial, Ohio, Brother Fulton, John L. Hedlisky, Brooks Hall, Ohio, First Lieutenant, Lawrence E. Hoff, too, to Myra, Pennsylvania, Last couple, Robert A. Sandler, Sugar Cone, Central Burning. A modern AI, beyond an end of the world, 
get all the fighting now in the life. Can you find this music? This is Voice of Vietnam, what you see from her name, capital of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. We are personal to American citizens and the first at 795 on time on the 31, 41, and 214 of the year, and 1630 when 21 hours spent in time on the 25, 31, and 214 of the year. And at 20, 21.30, and 13.30 hours of time. Yes, our talks include both one to six of the other guys. Both of these words are making me impressed. I'll be telling you at the time launched by the South Vietnamese People's Liberation Conference against the U.S. and Saigonese military forces and headquarters these days. The 
that I felt when I first got up to speak was of short duration. And as for being lonely, I can assure any soldier that is considering making a stand against the war that since that day in November 1965, I've met more real people, I've made more real friends than I ever could have made or ever could have imagined before. As expected, my former comrades in arms, uh, Rifers all, cut me cold. But that too has changed. Most of them now write. Many of them have also quit and most of them for the same reason that I did. I now average 10 to 12 letters a week from GIs in Vietnam, and I've yet to receive an unfriendly one. But the main thing that has happened in the past three years is that now when I'm dumping on the war in Vietnam and the military, I'm no longer espousing an unpopular cause. If you really want to hear the war and the military dumped on, go talk to GIs in Vietnam. Last week I returned from Vietnam and Laos after three months. When I went there, I went there with the anticipation that I was going to get stoned. Uh, by rock, by rock, you know, this way. Evidently, so did the Army, that they did quickly passed the word around to the soldiers that I was in the country to be aware of what they said. So well, instead of facing the way, the GIs actually got me out to commiserate and to shake my hand. It was quite a shock. One night, in fact, I had the great pleasure of hearing a PFP tell a major in front of two special forces types that the major had no right to even discuss the war in Vietnam since obviously he, he knew nothing about it or the people of Vietnam. Furthermore, he got away with it. People, I tell you, the military had a problem and I couldn't be happier about it. I'm not, I'm not trying to give the impression that the majority of the GIs in Vietnam are ready to refer and meet me. This would be very unrealistic and it would be far from the truth. But even for those who are in favor of the war, they have enough questions about it now that the others can knock it without fear of bodily harm. I, I stood in a bunker on top of the hill near Dark Moon just last month and listened to a GI put the whole war down in front of the three company commanders. The company commander could only shake his head and walk out of the bunker. At least half of the junior officers I talked with told me they were getting out and going back to school. If only 5% of them were up to that, we're going to have an awful surplus of teachers next year. The military in Vietnam, as a matter of fact, because of the attitude of the soldiers in Vietnam, has been forced to replace leadership in a spree with technology. Before going to Vietnam, the soldiers told all the Vietnamese, love our soldiers. They told of the great victories and the great progress the military is making in Vietnam. But the enemy is being faced. Yet when he arrives, he finds out that after almost 30,000 GIs have been killed and died, in spite of the kill ratio he's asked to believe, after two and a half years, what is he going there to defend? He's going there to defend Saigon, Da Nang, Quay, and a whole slew of other places that were considered secured and pacified three years ago. And that is progress. Almost one half of our ground effectives at this moment are being effectively tied down, protecting Saigon alone. What has happened? Information has become the enemy of the United States military. The fourth division in Vietnam is a case in point. When a fourth division replacement arrives at Cameron Bay, an all-American city isolated from Vietnam, he is immediately flown to an American air base outside of Play 2, where he's put on an American bus and trucked over to Campanari, an all-American base. 
after a week's orientation where he's warned against fraternizing with the Vietnamese or the mountain yards, he's given a permanent assignment. No matter what the assignment, his only contact for the next 12 months with the Vietnamese will be in the line of duty only. If he's in a support role, he'll be allowed one leave which he must take out of country. If assigned to a fire base, he is allowed an additional one in-country leave. But he must take that leave in a place such as Zung Tao. He's not allowed to take it, for instance, in Saigon. Now, for a soldier to go to Zung Tao for two weeks is, is much like an American going to Guantanamo and saying he's visiting Cuba. Uh, this may be the very first time in the, in the history of any army, that the army has had to be separated from the people, not to deny information to the enemy, but to deny information to the soldiers. Unfortunately for the army, and now because of their job, they get around. And also, unfortunately for the army, they talk to their buddies. The military has tried, and they've monitored a tremendous propaganda campaign to offset the effect, the effect of soldiers getting their hands on information. Again, unfortunately, the way they do this is they increase the size of information specialists, or the information office. But the people they have to assign to these jobs know how to read and write, and they have certain powers of observation. So as a group in Vietnam, the worst dissidents I found against the war were the public information specialists. Another happy change over the past couple of years is the change in the attitude of those opposed to the war towards GIs. Not too long ago, to quote a friend, those in the peace movement gave the impression that the GI was an American Eichmann unless he threw down his gun. Newsletters and papers supposedly written for the GIs and sold his intelligence almost as badly as did the military itself. Both were so bad the brass actually allowed the papers to be distributed in order to build morale among the troops. People who criticized the government for not understanding the Vietnamese People who had never been subject to the Uniform Code of Military, if you'll excuse the expression justice, people who had never been through basic training and had never lived under the pressures and propaganda of a soldier, people who had never had to put their body up against a machine gun, these same people supposed they could communicate with a soldier without doing any homework. But I'm not, I'm not pointing this out as a criticism I'm pointing it out as to show where we have come from. The peace movement, they or we, has done some great things in the last three years. The movement has created a climate on the outside that has encouraged and made possible for soldiers to take stands that require one hell of a lot more guns than that required to face a machine gun. More and more GIs know that there are friends on the outside willing to help them. We now have such things as the Coffee House Project of the Summer of Support, started by a friend of mine with which I'm proud to have my name associated. We have many organizations now geared and oriented towards the GIs. We have GI organizing themselves. But we have to do more, and it's imperative that we do it together. To those in the movement, I say this. Work hard. Don't push. We're dealing with people who went to the same schools as we did. Don't box the men. Give the soldier information and give them aid. Soldier can figure it out. To the army alone, I say, cool it. The soldiers already tell you it's for the surfing of isms and anti-isms. To those who have never been in the military, for God's sake, do your homework. Find out what a soldier is before you try to talk to him. To the soldiers and ex-soldiers, I ask you to talk it up. The sad fact that still today in this country, 
people give a great weight to the words of the soldiers, especially those who have served in time of war. But take advantage of it. God knows the government does. It doesn't have to be on a public platform. I'd be the last man to fool anybody who has no great desire to get up on a stage. But you can talk it up with your friends, your neighbors. No one knows better than we who are drafted.